I'm Maria and I'm a particle physicist at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. I'm a postdoc in the nuclear science division. So a postdoc is a scientist up to a few years after obtaining their PhD who is transitioning from being a grad student to being a fully independent scientist in academia or sometimes in industry. Uh, so today I would like to tell you a bit about my work, what does it mean to be a physicist, and actually about my motivation to pursue a career in STEM. So in the beginning I would like to introduce you to one person. Probably you already know her. It's Marie Curie. She was one of the most important scientists at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, and actually she was a precursor of the fields of radiochemistry, nuclear physics and particle physics I work in. So me and Marie have something in common. It's not only the first name, <laughs> but we are actually both coming from Poland. So Marie Skłodowska Curie was uh, Polish and actually she even named one of the elements she discovered after the country of Poland, which is Polonium. Polonium is a very difficult name of the element to pronounce for a non-native speaker. Polonium. Okay. So back then when I was a kid in Poland, I was very curious about the world, you know, around me, generally about everything. I was always asking why something is happening, why something is like this or that. I liked chemistry, math, I liked uh, physics later, but you know, I also liked Polish literature. So I really didn't know what I wanted to do in the future. I was very, you know, undecided. And then uh, at my high school, I had a very charismatic physics teacher and I wanted to be like him. You know, I wanted to be a teacher and I've chosen physics because it was like a sophisticated solving of puzzles and riddles. And I was learning a lot about the world around me. So then during my studies at the Jagiellonian University in Krakow, Poland, um, my dreams of becoming a teacher kind of transitioned into dreams of becoming a scientist. And everything happened during my undergrad internships in Fermilab, one of the national labs here in the US, when I got completely hooked by the world of particle physics and this you know, international environment of scientists. And yeah, I, I decided I wanna be a scientist. So I uh, decided to continue in physics. I moved to Germany where, where I obtained my uh, PhD from the University of uh, Cologne and Research Center Jülich. And right now I'm a postdoc at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So this also show you very well that science is really international. You know, I'm Polish, I moved to Germany right now, I'm here in the US. And really scientists from all over the world are working together to push boundaries of our knowledge. So what boundaries do I push at my work? <laughs> you know, in my studies, I try to understand um, how the matter which builds me, you and our whole world is constructed, how it's structured. What is the most basic, most fundamental structure of matter which builds our world? So actually our universe is quite old. It was born 14 billion years ago, really, really a long time ago uh, during the Big Bang. But actually what happened in the very first seconds just after this Big Bang uh, decided about the structure of matter we are all made of, decided uh, about this how world looks like right now, and actually um, decided about this how the most elementary pieces of matter called 
elementary particles are interacting between uh, each other. So we know that me and you are made of atoms, but atoms are not the most elementary, not most basic pieces of matter. They are made of uh, a nucleus, which is in the center, and a cloud of electrons. So the simplest atom, the hydrogen atom, is uh, made of a one proton, which is in the center, and one electron. But you know, this proton is also not the most fundamental, not most basic particle. It actually has a very complicated and dynamic internal structure. So the proton is made of particles called quarks and antiquarks and particles called gluons, which are gluing everything together. But not only this, you know, the interior of proton is extremely complicated and dynamic. These quarks and antiquarks are interacting between each other together with gluons that the pairs of quarks and antiquarks are just popping up and disappearing, producing energy. Everything is in constant movement. Uh, everything is moving almost with the speed of light. So it's like a, it's really complicated and messy inside. So to look inside the proton, to really understand its internal structure, together with my colleagues, actually more than 700 colleagues from all around the world, uh, at the STAR collaboration, at the STAR experiment, which is located at the Brookhaven lab, it's close to the New York City, uh, we try to reproduce these conditions just a few seconds after the Big Bang, to understand how a uh, proton looks inside and also how the most basic constituents of proton interact between each other. So we have a huge device called accelerator where we accelerate protons almost to the speed of light and we smash them. And we smash them with such a huge energies that uh, this proton can, uh, the protons can break and it allows for a you know, direct interaction between its basic constituents. And also we have so much energy that new particles can be produced out of this reaction. And we detect, we, um, we collect everything what is produced in this kind of interaction in a huge device, in a huge device called a particle detector, which in our case is called STAR. And we try to, you know, we measure energy, momentum, mass of these escaping particles, and we track back this what happened while these particles interacted between each other, and we can learn more about the interior of the protons. So in my studies, I'm especially curious about spin of the proton. I try to understand how spin of the proton arises from its, you know, internal messy structure, especially how it arises from spins of gluons inside the proton. What actually is spin? So spin is a very basic property of every particle, you know, as fundamental as mass or electric charge. Uh, it is related to magnetic properties of uh, particles. So when a particle with spin travels through magnetic field, it will behave like a small magnet, a weird quantum mechanical magnet. But in a broader sense, spin is an essential property which uh, influences the order of electrons and nuclei in atoms and molecules, and actually which um, can determine or determines the stability of matter which um, me, you and our whole world is made of. So studying spin allows us to understand the matter which we are made of and actually brings us closer to answering the very, very fundamental questions about this, how our universe exists uh, as it is. So actually to learn more about the world of particle physics and to learn more about this what doesn't mean to be a physicist, the world on you know, academia and national labs, I encourage you to visit um, my Twitter and also Twitter of Berkeley Lab, 
and also web page of Berkeley Lab where actually you can learn by far more not only about physics but the whole world of different disciplines you know from biosciences through material sciences computing sciences and uh, you know chemistry and very and many different branches of physics mm -hmm.